how would you introduce maybe like a, a cousin's best friend or something like that to cycles? Like what really is cycles? Um, wow. Um, we're a band. Um, and uh, it's just three guys. Um, two of us uh, met in Colorado. But one um, I know from my college days in Chicago. And, um, you know, he just joined the band, like, I'd say, like, oh, yeah, right before Beanstalk. So ju- a week before, so, like, June uh, this year he joined. And, you know, I'll talk about Tucker, but um, Colin is the name, the drummer that just joined, and he's, like, one of my best friends and just, like, a brother to me. And uh, I'm really glad that he joined because Michael was, you know, one of my best friends and, like, a brother to me as well. So when I found out that, you know, he wasn't going to be in the band, I was, like, kind of bummed uh, about that, you know. So we, when I text Colin, he was, like, ready to go, and I was like, oh, man, you know, because Colin is just so good, and uh, he's just one of my favorite people on the planet, one of so many other people's favorite people on the planet, and uh, so the same with Tucker, too, so it's just, like, this perfect uh, balance that we've got going on in our rhythm section, and so playing these shows is just crazy, you know, but, uh, yeah, we're just a three-piece rock, uh, you know, instru- you know, we do a lot of instrumental jamming stuff, jam band stuff, but we love all types of music too and and we just like to have a good time and play music live for Fuck audience. yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And to be quite fair, uh the great great portion of the weird music audience is huge in the cycle. So uh need no introduction but still grateful to have it from the source itself. But man, you've got a new drummer, Colin O'Brien. That's so that's your longtime friend, huh? Yeah, he's just like exactly. Yeah, Colin is is the man, and he's just like for for so long, uh, you know, been like a guy that I've just like um, looked up to and musically, and like in Chicago, he he was always the drummer, like that you could call that was gonna smash. Like I guess that's how I always viewed him, you know, like you know, and and hold it down, play tight. And he could do all genres, you know, he, you know, like, so that's what drew me to him. Like his ability to improvise was really cool. So, um, that's why I've always really loved Colin, but yeah, no, um, he, 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 he plays really well and he adds good energy on the road. Like anyone that's ever been on tour, you know, no matter if you're in a band or go following a band or just on a road trip, like you gotta have good good positive energy even when shit hits the fan like especially when shit hits the fan you know like it's unrealistic to just be a positive person all the time but it really comes in handy when fucking you know god forbid but in a car accident or whatever happens you know it's like Colin's the best vibes you know so that's why we love him and he plays drums very well we're really fortunate to be here you know in the first place so it's like to be rolling around in a in a van playing music and playing shows for people is like this whole level, whole you know other level of awesomeness. <laughs> Fucking hats off to that shit, man. I mean, a lot of people play music. A lot of people have want to be a rock star, but to actually walk the walk and to do it. Oh, dude, my man. Yeah, no, like I mean, we're I'm just all three of us feel just the same way, you know, we're really fortunate, man, like, it's, it's a tight group, which is, there's just three of us, and we just try to keep as little, as extra, you know, bullshit, you know, as possible, and just try to keep it to the music, I guess, you know, like, it's, it's like, you can't, on the road, you can't really see what's going to happen, and you can't tell how many people are going to show up and stuff, and that's, like, part of the experience, you know, like, but uh, it really does help when you've got some positive attitude. It's just like I hate to be that guy, but it's just true, you know. Like I mean, even music itself is, I it's it's a conduit. It's not about it's not about the specific sound. It's about 
what's being channeled through the music, which can only be as strong as the source it comes from, right? Exactly, intention, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, that's a really powerful thing. And, like, you know, it's, 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 that's definitely true, you know? Like, you learn about yourself through that, almost. Like, mm-hmm. like you're like, damn, like, like, what am I thinking about while I'm playing this, you know? And, like, why? You know, some nights, you know? And then some nights you totally have it flowing through you, or at least this is for me, and I know why I feel that way, and I... And 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 I'm putting. I know why I'm putting it out there. And I, with every note, like I feel the intention. You know, like of like you know, for example, like sometimes it's like a person for like the love I have for for a single individual. You know, and, and you're like, I love this about them, or and this, and the way that they do this. And next thing you know, you have all this amazing, beautiful stuff coming out. You know. It's 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 fucking crazy, you know, and I think you're right, yeah, the power of intention definitely goes a long way when you're improvising and that's why it's good to have positive like stuff going on <laughs> in the van and like backstage and not as much like beating yourself up or like 'cause you know, everyone has shitty shitty shows and shitty days sometimes but it's like it's like when you dwell on it that's when you get caught in the in the not so good cycle. Right. Cycle. Huh? <laughs> anyway, positive cycles only, right? Not only. Exactly. For the most well, part. I mean, it, you know, it's part. like, if, that's the intention, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, I honestly want to ask, though, like, I fucking love cycles personally. What is that unique cycles feel that you feel like, you know, is the reason cycles should exist in the music scene? Is the reason that cycles isn't just like everything else? What really... In the grand scheme of these jam bands, what is Cycles? How is it unique, and why Why does it matter that Cycles exist? Um, well, it's funny you say that because I I pretty much, uh, um, yeah, like, I'm, I wait. I, I, by halfway through my day, I'm kind of just, like, begging for some originality, like, in life and in everything that I see and do. Um because I, you know, for obvious reasons, it's a crazy, weird time right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it's always a crazy, weird time. These <laughs> uh, <laughs> <but>, uh, are. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like I mean, one thing I guess that I can say that I, that's always um, driven me to keep going back and listening to our recordings, like instead of listening to like Led Zeppelin or like. Beach House or whoever the fuck I'm listening to is like I think it's because like of the energy that comes out of the jams it's like this like fucking like raw energy I've heard it from a few other people and and like it's like shout out to Trey yeah, well, I, I mean, Trey, Trey definitely, I mean, fuck, dude, that guy, he, he's got it, um, and he, he knows all about that, um, but, you know, I guess what I'm talking about is, is, is from, like, a band's, like, a lot, the live show, and the live experience, deep in the, in the improv, you know, mm-hmm. you know, what's coming off the stage, what's coming through the jams, through that intention that we were talking about, like, when it meet, links up to all together and creates this powerful, like, explosion of awesomeness and vibration, like, you know, it's, like, beyond us. And, like, I uh, I, I love that when Cycles goes on tour, we, we come back home with these recordings of, you know, as long as the shows are recorded, these recordings of, like, you know, of, of, like, crazy, uh, just new, new stuff happening each night. Like, new, like, energy each night, because based on the different situation, like, what we all went through, and it's like, I don't know, like, I, I, it never gets old to me, like, that to me never gets old, and, and to be able to, like, somewhat steer the, that, and is, like, a whole, like, crazy thing to me, so, like, of course I love listening back, but I really do like the music, and I, I think that, like, the improv 
has a lot of originality. But that's just my favorite. I think a lot of other people would say that us being a three-piece, um, us having a bass player that sings a lot of the songs, um, just like, you know, all all types of stuff like that that you don't quite see in the jam scene as much. It's like, you know, that we I just don't, I don't see those things. Um, but in, and I don't even see that as in rock music as much. Like just three piece. I guess there's some indie bands out there, but yeah, like I, I think that's cool. And I think it's cool that we've never really got a key, keys player. And I just we've all tried to comp, not compensate, but we've just gone for it. Just like fuck it, you know, three piece. Let's let's go and let's rock out. And and, it, and it, it's created I think a decently big, decently large sound. So for that, but. You can't really become original without taking influences from other places. Unless you're like Jesus Christ from like Immaculate Conception or some <laughs> strange thing, but that's not gonna happen. So you're you're like, you know, pretty much I don't know, hoping and praying that you're you're making original stuff and if it feels good it's awesome. But yeah, I started out playing uh uh, playing like you know wanting to play rock and metal basically like wanting to find the craziest solos and heaviest riffs and stuff <laughs> and like that was like I guess like fifth grade through I guess I don't know like uh ninth about ninth grade and like my dad was always into into jazz and R&B and neo soul and like, I know my grandpa was a drummer, jazz drummer. He kind of passed that down to my dad. And um, it was, you know, not soon. It was it was pretty soon before, like, I, I just got into fusion, like, jazz, like fusion, like, my, jazz fusion. Like, uh, hearing, like, Miles Davis' Bitches Brew first at music camp, at guitar camp, and then Interlochen, Michigan, where Nora Jones went to great camp. And, uh... I, I they had this library full of like fucking records in there. And you could go in and listen to whatever you wanted. So I get I'd get private lessons, so I'd ask my teacher, I'd be like, What should I listen to? And and he's like, Give me a list and he told me like John McLaughlin, uh, Bob Vishnu, um, Pat Metheny, who had already seen before, but wanted to dive more. Um some I think some out stuff. Oh, oh yeah, the like the Latin. It was like Friday night in San Francisco. Al Demiola, stuff like that. So '70s jazz fusion rock. So I I yeah. dove into that head first, and it was the same time I started smoking weed. So I'm shout like, out to Ganja. A shout out to Ganja. <laughs> praise job bless. Like praise be to to the yeah, man. Dog. Job, but, but, job but. <laughs> but uh yeah and uh for sure and uh you know i for sure. i mean ma vision orchestra some of those uh those jazz fusion records really kind of helped me go from this metal shred thing to like even a deeper like spiritual like finding intention like behind like meaning behind the music and because they didn't have it doesn't have words and i've always thought that like that was so cool like how come? How come? You, how come? No words is so fucking dope. I think it's so cool because it's like you can communicate this message to all these people without talking, and it's like you know people fucking talk too much, dude. You know. Mm. <laughs> I just feel like, like maybe words get in the way of what, like, of it, what message. Yeah, and I, I don't want to tell anyone what what to do, but like or how to live their lives, but I just think it's really cool that you can convey a message without words. Um, I still write songs with lyrics. I'm just starting to recently, but I, like, I get it, and I love it, and I love lyrics. But um, I thought that was cool when I was, like, 14, and I was super ripped on weed. So, like, going into that, you know, I found all this. I got into jazz straight up, like, remove the, the rock elements and go just, you know, jazz form, you know, and see, you know, see what's up with that, and I, and I'll admit, like, I didn't go as heavy as some of my friends did, and just started learning standard after standard after standard, Rob Compa knows probably a million, 
but, you know, we hang out and geek about that stuff. Now, he's the man. He's an incredible player. That's what happens when you learn standard after standard. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that all of that c- kind of went into me getting into fish when I did, because when I did get into fish, I was like, well, this, I don't see what all the hype is, is about. You know, it's just this guy up there singing goofy songs and millions of people follow him around, like, okay. But, and it's like, come on, Jerry, like, he's not better than Jerry. No way. And and so then I went to see the fish in 2009 at Deer Creek. That was my first show. And, yeah, just, like, since that day, like, it was, like, a couple weeks after I graduated high school. Like, I'm here now 10 years later because of that day. Just because of so many other things, like so many other musical moments too, that led up to that point. But yeah, they were they definitely opened my ears to improvisation big time, and and so have so many other amazing light, you know, be, you know light people, you know people that just shine light, like Santana, Jerry, John McLaughlin from Avish and Orchestra, Jimmy Herring is massive for me, um, and it's so many other people, you know, it, original guys like Miles Davis who. And David Bowie, who couldn't stop, you know, going against the grain of what they were categorized as, you know, and making new genres. Like, I love, I love that shit. So, you know, I, um, I think all that wraps into my influence as a guitar player. That's a little bit of of what I like. You mentioned going against the grain, Patrick. Is the, that's a great opportunity for me to ask you how you go against the grain? Specifically with your music, um, I I uh, do you even maybe you don't. Well, I on tour on tour I try not to do the same things twice. But I I sometimes like to like when we get into jams to like bring back these themes that we like start on tour, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it could be a chord progression or just a little bit of it and. You know, and going there because it's like it's like a new song, you know, like out of nowhere, and it's, it's everyone's dancing to it and into it for a second, and then right back to the song. So I, I think that that's one thing that I that's one thing that I like to keep original while on the road. Like, sure, we could write new songs and stuff, and but like it's like might as well while we're jamming, like try out some new stuff, but also bring back some other things. As far as songwriting goes, like. Um, I just, I don't really fucking try to be original, like, I, I think I've just been, whatever sounds good to me, and, like, whatever, I, I, if, I if I would listen to it, like, after band practice, like, if I listen back to it, I'm like, yeah, I would listen to this, like, I'd throw this on a playlist, then I, then we'll play it at a show, you know, and, and that's, that's how I, how I go about, about stuff, try to go with the flow. I love it, I love it, so, man, if, Patrick were to say on a billboard his intention, you use the word intention, your intention with life, with music, with cycles, in a phrase, in a sentence, in a couple sentences, what would you say? Oh, man. So, like, the caption underneath that word, is that what you're saying? On the billboard. Oh, like a word like intention, but instead. Nah, no, else. no, no, no. Uh, a sentence or two about what is it that was, has been, and is your intention behind your life, behind cycles, behind Patrick as a musician, and behind Patrick as a person. You know what? What would be on that billboard? Oh man, it's almost impossible not to say something too cliche. <laughs> um. Don't be too sensitive and go with the flow. Love it. I love it. Just fucking let it rip. Who gives a fuck? Right? Like, <laughs> let's, or, or, you know, let's go. <laughs> let's fucking go, baby. Let's fucking go, baby. Patrick, thank you it, for being on the Weird Music Podcast, man. It, it's All the love. An, it, the it's an honor. Thing. It's an honor. And I know it's seriously an honor to know that I'll be seeing you for the rest of my life and all of the people that are listening too. So um so much love and and um so much gratitude and and much love. Fuck yeah. Cheers man and anyone out there listening who's made it this far, shout out to you. Weird music fucking loves you. 